pleased with our efforts. Out of 28 functions, 16 or 17 are ready to enter the novitiate. Now let's consider the doubtful ones again. There's Ermengarde. I don't think the Roman mother can have any doubt about Ermengarde. The religious life is no place for the pious. You mean the pretentiously pious, Sister Berta? There's Christina. And there's Maria. Well, after last night, the Reverend Mother can't have any doubt about Maria. I gave her permission to leave the Abbey for the day. I told you, Sister Berta. Ave. Reverend Mother, I brought Maria. She's waiting. Sister Sophia, the mistress of novices and the mistress of postulants, don't see eye to eye about Maria. How do you feel about her? I, I love her very dearly, but Therese does seem to be in trouble, doesn't she? Exactly what I said. She climbs a tree and turns her sheep or dresses God a tear. She rolls his on her way to mass and whistles on the stair. I know Yes, Reverend Mother, about last night. 
I was on my knees most of the night because I was late. And you'd been so kind and given me permission to leave. It wasn't about you being late, Maria. I must have awakened half of the abbey before Sister Margareta heard me and opened the gate. Maria, very few of us were asleep. We could only think that you had lost your way and to be lost at night on that mountain. I couldn't be lost on that mountain, Mother. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain which brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work, and I'd hear them singing on their way to Vespers. Sometimes, I would go back up that mountain, singing all the way. Which brings up another transgression. I was singing last night, and I was singing without your permission. It's only here in the Abbey there is a rule about singing, Maria. That's the hardest rule of all of for me. Sister Margaret is always reminding me, but too late after I started singing. And the other day in the garden when you were singing at the top of your voice? But Mother, it's that kind of song. I came to the window when you saw me. You stopped. That's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a child. I can't quite remember. Please. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are the
always makes me feel better. Reverend Mother, where did you learn that song? I was brought up on that mountain myself. In spite of what you saw over our outer wall, you weren't prepared for the way you lived, were you, Maria? No, but I pray and I try. Tell me, what is the most important lesson you have learned here? To find out what is the will of God and to do it, even if it is hard to accept, even then. Maria, the dress you wore when you came to us, is it still in the roving room? Why, no, Mother. I'm sure it's been given to the poor. Sister Margaret always says, when we enter the abbey, Reverend Mother, why do you ask? It seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? Oh, no, Mother, please, no. For a while only, perhaps if you go out to the world, you'll finally accept, and that we do expect it. I know what you expect, Reverend Mother, and I'll do it. I promise. Maria, if it is God's will, where am I to go? There is a family, a family of seven children. You like children, and you're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? <coughs> Captain Montreal expects you this afternoon. He is a fine man and a great one. He received the Maria Tracel Medal from the Emperor for heroism in the Adriatic. Captain in the Navy? My mother will be very strict. You're not to be sent his fellowship. Mother, have I your permission to sing? Yes, my dear. 